The insertion of implants is not only a matter of bone. Soft tissues require care and attention in order to obtain the desired results. Together with Dr. Fabio Filanino, we will do an analysis of articles and some cases to evaluate the aspects to be taken into account for implant success. Dr. Filanino is a member of IAO and the Association of Italian Graduates of New York Dentistry College. And he has been BMB Dental user for several years. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Fabio Manu Filanino from Italy. And today's lecture wants to speak about the soft tissues uh, around the implants and their importance for aesthetic aspect and for the long-term stability of our rehabilitation. We all know from uh, uh, Professor Jean Lind about the importance of the bone to achieve osseous integration and to support the soft tissues. But we know also the, that the quantity and the quality of the, the soft tissue is of uh, tremendous importance to achieve aesthetic and uh, to maintain stability of uh, the rehabilitation during the time. So do we want uh, that our implants uh, have optimal aesthetics and function immediately and keep those aspects in a predictable, predictable way uh, during uh, time? Well, this is what we want to achieve after the osseointegration integration of our implants uh, that are healthy gums with the pink tissues and the ideal quantity and quality of them. It seems, it, it seems uh, 20 years of uh, my implantologist practice, uh, I try to be the more conservative and the minimal invasive as possible, avoiding as much as I can big surgeries and uh, uh, biomaterials. When we insert an implant, we have to know exactly what to do. But what we know um, today and what did I learn from, clinical, from my clinical experience about the complex implant bone and soft tissues. In these lectures, I'll give you the golden rules <clears throat> to follow every, um, every time we perform implant surgeries about 3D implant in, in position, keratinized tissue, um, mucogingival uh, height, um, tissue phenotype, and the crown shape with its transition zone. And uh, so all the sovracrestal complex. Starting from the 3D implant in position, uh, we know exactly where we should plan our implant insertion. We need uh, uh, two millimeter of uh, buccal uh, bone plate. Uh, we need to respect at least 1.5 millimeters from the adjacent teeth and 3 millimeters from um, adjacent implant. And we need 3 to 4 millimeters of space from the implant platform to the future zenith of the crown for the biological width to prevent saucerization and bone loss. All these indications come to us from the publication of uh, scientific studies that are examined both by the literature review we mentioned earlier and by this uh, 2018 study by Testori Wong and Zucchelli in which we, co we focus mainly on the positioning of the implants in the aesthetic area. So we, uh, all, we have always to respect all these parameters when we insert our implants. Like in this uh, clinical case, where we have uh, planned to do a roll flap to increase the soft tissues uh, width for the, for the future, future crown. And so we start with the crestal depitalization using a blade or a diamond bar. Minimal flap were, was designed with papilla preservation with lingual crestal incision. And, I, and uh, I have used bone expander to preserve at my best the original native bone. Until the definitive osteotomy, where all the pre-existing bone is preserved. And in that bone environment, I would insert the implant taking and respecting all the measurements we need to respect, all of them. The 3D positioning in relation to the bone, the soft tissues and the adjacent dental structures. In this case, we have 
1.5 millimeter of subcrestal implant insertion and 1.5 millimeter of soft tissue width and the minimum space we need this is the minimum space we need to have for uh, the biological width of our implants and here we can see the reason why we started with the roll flap since the beginning the buccal bone is just sufficient for our implant position, so we need more soft tissues buccally to protect the thin bone. We also can customize our um, healing abutment to give the augmented uh, to give to the augmented soft tissues the ideal shape for the, uh, our future crown. In this case, a molar, using some tricks like Teflon tapes standard healing abutment holder by BMB dental implants and flow composite to reach the ideal shape we need. So here we can see our healing abutment in place and the, the, the flap ready to be sutured as a roll, putting the, the epithelialized area in contact with the healing abutment. Like we can see in this picture, where we, um, where we have a uh, suture in place to fix the flap around the healing abutment. And in this view, we can see how we can achieve more tissue around the, uh, our uh, handmade healing abutment, changing drastically the buccal aspect of the gums. Here are the pre and post-op images right after the surgery. And here, after two months, um, we have all we need to go to the definitive crown, taking a unique impression of implant position and the soft tissues together, allowing us to convert all these informations into CAD and into the final shape of the crown. And all this without needing any provisional to shape the tissues, to to change the, the shape of the tissues. This is another clinical case in which um, a customized healing uh, screw abutment was used to obtain emergence profiles suitable for a, a molar in a, a area 4.6. And once on integration has taken place, a silicon key is created to be able to memorize and then reproduce the same emergency profiles that we have given uh, on the day of the surgery. And this is one of the analogical ways in which uh, uh, a customized tra transfer can be obtained by recording the volumes of the healing abutment. And here we can see the difference between a standard transfer and the uh, conditioned profiles using the during that we have that we got uh, during the healing process and the volumes are replicated with the flow composite and here are the finishing stages and uh, insertion into the mouth for impression taking another clinical uh, photo of the patient during the impression and quickly the laboratory steps to get directly to the final crown without uh, uh, passing through provisional restoration which uh, we which which does um, nothing but follow and respect the already stable volumes of the per implants of tissues allowing its accommodation during delivery without uh, any mucos, uh, muc mucosal compressions Immediately, the crown has the right fit and the fabrics are not modified. And this is the starting point that has, the, uh, that has all the credentials to remain constant over time. Now, let's talk about the importance of a wide band of non-mobile keratinized tissue around, around dental implants. Most of the literature reviews concluded that an adequate zone of keratinized mucosa around 4 mm from the mucogingival junction to the gingival line is associated with less plaque uh, accumulation, um, less tissue inflammation, less recession and uh, less loss of attachment. 
but we don't um, we then we don't have always the ideal condition like in this picture so we need to work for it like in this case where <clears throat> at the beginning we have a good amount and quality of keratinized tissue that we want to maintain but a huge buccal concavity at the pontic area so we need to go with the very minimal invasive surgery during the extraction and um, here we can see the minimally uh, sectioning of the of the roof and during the implant insertion with the socket shield technique in the medial implant to obtain the 3d aspect of both hard and soft tissues and uh, in the middle i've gone with depitalization of the pontic area and I have raised a uh, half thickness flap, and we can see here. And I did a roll flap to augment buccally the pontic area, and I managed the for, for a second intention leaning at the distal implant to gain keratinized tissue during the healing process. So this is the roll flap and the half thickness flap, roll flap buccally. And here is a, a collagen sponge for the second healing. Um, second intention healing. Only by following this step, we can finally achieve what we need to have good amount of keratinized mucosa around our, our implants for optimal aesthetic health and function. Another clinical case, the patients needed um, 2.6 hopeless extraction in the left upper jaw uh, area. Once the extraction has been performed, in this case uh, with the socket shield technique, the thickness of the mucosa is measured to decide before elevating the flap, the crestal level of our implant. Here we can see the, the initial measurement of the mucosal height. At this point, the implants are inserted, the looking for optimal primary stability with all the technique we know and have at, at our disposal. Uh, we can note uh, um, that following the extraction, we have a small perforation of the, of the Schneiderian membrane, which uh, we will uh, close with simple uh, collagen sponges. As we can see in this uh, intraoperative image. And, this, and uh, at this point, we insert our customized uh, healing screw to stabilize the clot and to keep the tissue stable during the osseointegration phase of the implants. And the analog construction phases are always the same, use of the implant carrier and flow composite, which is then um, polished very carefully. And this is what it looks after six months of uh, osseointegration and the soft tissue stabilization. We then move on and taking the impression, and in this case, to delivery a definitive uh, abutments and uh, temporary crowns to allow the patient to move forward with other aspects of uh, his uh, treatment plan. Another view of the temporary prosthesis uh, where you can see above all, um, above all an adequate band of keratinized uh, gingival buccally to both implants and the thickness that we measured at the beginning maintained for both implants and may be improved on the 2.7. And this is the comparison between the initial and the final situation where we remember that at the 2.6 uh, implant we made socket shield. Now we talk about tissue phenotype and mucosal height of the, tos, uh, of the soft tissues around implants. At least we need a two millimeter band of attached keratinized tissue um, that we can uh, measure in, um, in the width and the thickness. It's essential for long-term success for the, for the dental implant. Insufficient uh, attacked keratinized tissue is associated with the inability of the patient to do proper oral hygiene around dental implants, increased incidence of recession, uh, especially in the thin phenotype, 
increased uh, incidence of bleeding on probing and the peri-implant mucositis, um, especially in a thin phenotype, and increased incidence of peri-implantitis. Here is an example uh, in a premolar area, um, upper jaw, where we need to increase the horizontal bone width and manage the soft tissues. The partial thickness flap maintaining the periosteum in sight help us to increase the osteotomy using the bone expanders without wasting net in patient's bone. And finally, the osteotomy is done and the implant inserted. A roll flap uh, suture is performed to augment the buccal thickness and the soft tissues. And the healing um, after three months during the analogic impressions, where we can observe an opti optimal height and thickness of the soft tissues coronal to the implant uh, platform. You can see in height and width is a, a optimal condition for our um, um, definite re definitive rehabilitation. And finally, this allows us to obtain a good environment for the final crown. Um, last but not the least, we have to talk about the crown shape and the, transi the transition zone. So we talk about the famous four millimeter uh, rule where uh, from the implant platform to the crown zenith, we need three to four millimeter of soft tissue space for the biologic width divided by subcritical um, subcritical contour is about uh, one millimeter to 1.5 millimeter with the surf conferential um, uh, collagen fibers. Critical contour with um, jun junctional epithelium, uh, 1.5 to 2 millimeters uh, with the hemidesmosomes and gingival sulcus with the um, sulcus epithelium that is 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter with the crown shape designed to give um, a sigillum uh, to protect the critical area. So the, our, our crowns are to, uh, have to be designed to uh, close the, the space, the, the critical area to the plaque, okay? So let's check a couple of clinical cases. Uh, first one is an implant rehabilitation at the, at the right posterior upper jaw, where I did an implant with the crestal sinus lift at uh, 21.6 with the roll flap technique and the wide standard healing abutment. Here, in the, this is the 1.6. This allowed me to have a nice gingival contour um, for a molar tooth and uh, to take an impression uh, with a better transition zone at soft tissue level. And here, this is the transfer, the same place. And at the premolar area at tooth number um, 1.4, an immediate implant uh, with the socket shield technique was done. And the customized healing abutment using Teflon tape to protect the socket, uh, like in this picture. A, a temporary uh, ex peak abutment and composite to preserve at maximum level the original architecture, both of the heart and the soft tissues. Here the situation after the os integration and the soft tissue sealings uh, at the impression time with all the aspects and parameters of the ideal biologic width respected. So this is the premolar and this is the molar. Second case I want to show you is a molar number um, 2.6 where I had to insert an implant reaching primary stability at sinus floor side. Every time I need more tissues on the tissue on the buccal side, I've been using this simple suture to anchor the roll flap entering from the palatal and uh, from the palatal side and taking the buccal flap from the outside to the inside 
and tidying than the knot. Here we can see the same knot with a different view, maybe clearer. Uh, here the, the entering of the suture and then we take the, the flap from the exterior of the flap and then we go inside and we go outside and we tie the knot. This is the post-op uh, post rigs and the final row flap suture. Three months post-operative um, after the OSI integration, impression phases and, and the stages and the color registration, a screw retained pick temporary abutment to crown, to temporary crown, to modify the emergence uh, profile of the molar. And here we can see um, uh, after six to eight weeks, we are ready to screw the final crown. So this is the conditioning, the tissue conditioning after with the provisional crown. That of course, um, our laboratory builds according to the space that we want to maintain uh, for the biological width and the soft tissues held for long-term stability. Of course, we have to respect also the distance from the uh, interproximal bone peaks to the contact points the, of, the, of our crown that are 4.5 millimeters in implant tooth environment and 3.5 millimeters in implant-implant situation. And this is the final pictures with the final X-rays. And here we can see that now the tissues is ready to uh, have uh, our molar crown. With this last case, uh, I want to thank you. Uh, thank you, BMB Dental, for inviting me. And um, I suggest you to, to write me and uh, to see my uh, YouTube channel uh, from some videos and uh, to follow me on Instagram or Facebook uh, and please send me an email uh, if you need uh, some um, advice uh, of uh, implant dentistry. And uh, I hope these uh, quick pills about soft tissue management uh, you liked it very much. and. Uh, uh, thank you again and bye-bye. Uh, Click on the link below and contact us for more information.